On today's Locked On Thunder podcast, the Oklahoma City Thunder earn a signature win on the road in Denver. Does this change anything about this season? We'll talk about it all coming up on today's Locked On Thunder podcast. You are Locked On Thunder, your daily Oklahoma City Thunder podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Let's get it going on the Locked On Thunder podcast, on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am your host, media member, editor-in-chief over at thunderousintentions.com, Ryland Styles. Follow the show on Twitter at LOThunderPod. Follow me on Twitter at Ryland underscore Styles. And on today's show, brought to you by Prize Picks, we're going to dive into a signature win for the Oklahoma City Thunder. Does this change the season for Oklahoma City? Your reactions to this game, Chet Holmgren had nine blocks, nine blocks. SGA hits a game winner and more. Uh, today's show, again, brought to you by Price Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to pricepicks.com slash locked in NBA or use code all lowercase locked in NBA for a first deposit match up to $100. Folks, the Thunder on Saturday night went into Denver with the altitude, and they were able to knock off the Denver Nuggets. Then the Nuggets controlled this game uh, for, for the vast majority of the contest. A win in Denver changes things for Oklahoma City. This was a signature win for the Thunder. This was not a win, uh, which is you know typically how you beat the Nuggets, is, is that they kind of sleepwalk and don't really care and, and just aren't playing well. And then you end up kind of getting them in the end. Denver played really well in this game. This was a good Nuggets game from a good Nuggets team, the reigning champions, and still uh, one of the title favorites this year. They took this game seriously, and yet they could not hold off the Thunder for 48 minutes because the Thunder continued to fight for 48 minutes, as they've done so far this year as they did all of last year. There's a two-year sample size of the Thunder continuing to throw counter punches after counter punches, but this year they're good enough to get over the hump more often than not. Only a few days from Christmas, which is whenever uh, the, the more casual fans say the season starts, and the Thunder are still here at the top of the Western Conference standings. I know that they're a young team, and I know that young teams are not supposed to be doing this. They're not supposed to be this good this fast. But there's always an exception to the rule. Now, I still believe that you know the playoffs is a different animal, and you, you, you've got to go kind of learn and take your lumps in the playoffs and, and go through those battles. But to this point, the Thunder have been bucking every other trend. Maybe this team truly is different, and that's what it felt like in Denver. When you withstand 12 lead changes, six ties, Denver goes up by 11, up by double digits in the, in the middle of the fourth quarter. Jamal Murray hits that just insane shot where he creates that separation from Lou Dort, and then Shea is right there to contest. Great contest from Shea, could not play any better defense, and Jamal Murray knocks it down. That felt like the game is over. But the Thunder kept chipping away, and their big three, along with, along with the rest of the rotation, helped them win this game. And SGA hits the game winner. This team is never phased, and they never blink. It doesn't matter if it's the reigning champs over there or if it's the Detroit Pistons over there. This Thunder team plays really consistent basketball. And they really play to their identity. Now, of course, you're not going to go 82-0. But a great response also from a loss in Sacramento. You know, you lose in Sacramento, it's easy to say, well, let's just get out of this two-game road trip and get back home for a very long 
long homestand, which starts tonight with the Grizzlies, who are an awful team right now due to injury. Um, you know, who, who obviously there should be there. There is no excuse not to just blow this team out tonight. But instead, the Thunder went and got a massive win against Denver. And when you look at this game as a whole, you can see how this Thunder team feels differently. The Nuggets out-rebounded the Thunder by six. The Nuggets turned the ball over nine times. Like, that's it. It wasn't as though it was an uncharacteristically high turnover game from Denver. In fact, the, the Thunder turned the ball over ten times. So, so they, were, they lost the turnover battle as well. The Nuggets shot 37% from three. But to limit the Nuggets to 45% from the floor, while the Thunder shot 51%, the Thunder shot 33% from three. The Thunder won points in the paint, 64 to 52. The Thunder lost second chance points, but only by three. And won fast break points, 18 to 11. You know, this game had it all. Where there were times where, you know, of course, you were struggling to, to get out to shooters, specifically Michael Porter Jr., who it felt like all four of us made threes were just wide open. And then Peyton Watson off the bench just comes out there and, and, and lights it on fire uh, from, from beyond the arc. But when you, when you look at this game, the Thunder were on equal footing with the Nuggets. Each team playing some of their best basketball, the Thunder were on equal footing. Now, this is one night in December. The Thunder have not caught the, the Nuggets. They're not going to be uh, on par with the Nuggets more often than not. But that's what they're capable of as this young team. And I think that that's why it's so exciting because we can keep putting them, putting onto them historical expectations of, of, of what typically happens in the NBA. But every time that that happens, they continue to, to buck the trend. So it doesn't feel like we know what the true ceiling of this team is even this year, regardless of, of what we think the ceiling can be in two, three, or four years from now. This team has an MVP-level player in SGA, who right now should be the leader in the clubhouse for MVP. It has Chet Holmgren, who it is not taboo anymore to say is, is an all-star-level player this year. They have Jalen Williams. We saw the way he can take over games throughout this season, especially, especially in non-SGA minutes whenever the team goes on scoring lows. And then a plethora of role players like Isaiah Joe, Cason Wallace, Kendrick Williams, right? Jay Will comes in and is huge. Three for four from Jay Will. Wiggins is huge. Usman Jang is coming around a little bit. So, like, you're seeing it. And then you have a, a defender like Lou Dort who can help you close out games down the stretch, as he did again on Saturday. If you put this team on paper, they have it all except for experience. If you put this team on paper, they check all the boxes except for that pesky experience box. They're well coached. They've got two high-end players. They've got really good depth. If you had that team anywhere else and, and kind of put a blind resume on them, the things that you would be comfortable saying about this team, I think would be would be out of this world. So I think that you should just simply enjoy what is going to happen this year for the Thunder and what can happen. Three games out from the best record in the West here just a few days before Christmas. 16 and 8 and 8 on the record. You know, we'll have to push that to 17 wins tonight against Memphis. There, there's no excuse to lose to Memphis. But this team is really good. This team is a top six seed in the West. And when you get into the dance and you have those things that we listed out, except for experience, then you're going to be able to be in a dogfight with anybody. You're going to be able to, to you know, match up with anybody especially with how good this team plays on the road. An 8-4 and four road record, an 8-4 and four home record. 
that plus the plus the the things we just checked off were, were they, it's not it's not as though they fall apart on the road or they or they stock up load up wins at home they're they're both eight and four both ways they're capable of playing in your house in their house that is just a testament of a really good team and you sh- you cannot get more excited for what this Thunder team is currently and can be in the future. But this was a signature win to say, you know what? Why not the Thunder this year? Why not kind of embrace this team even more, even more for this season, much less outward looking into the future? We'll get to more of your takeaways and more from this game all coming up on today's Locked on Thunder podcast. But first, I want to tell you right now about our good friends over at Price Picks, folks. Price Picks is great. Go to pricepicks.com slash locked on NBA. That's pricepicks.com slash locked on NBA. I love Price Picks. It's available in Oklahoma and it's daily fantasy sports made easy. You just go there and you say, well, the will the player that you've chosen go more or less than their projected numbers? So for example, Shake Alexander tonight, will he have more or less than 30 and a half points? All you gotta do is just pick more or less and then watch the game. If he has more and you pick more, boom, you win. You do that, you pick two to six players. You can even do cross-sport entries, which is really fun. So it's Monday Night Football. You can do uh, a few Thunder players and then mix in a few NFL players tonight. You can mix in uh, uh, some Eagles and some Seahawks tonight. It's really fun. Go check it out at prizepicks.com. That's prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA. And with prize picks, what's really cool is if you only care about the NBA, which a lot of us do, a lot of us just just follow the NBA. You understand that like the NBA injury report, you know, sometimes guys just pop up on there out of nowhere. Well, if you, if you set your card at lunch, right. And then all of a sudden there's some, some flare up injury at five o'clock while you're busy, uh, you know, with, with your evening routine before the games tip off. It's okay. If you missed it, it's okay. If you missed the alert, because they have this nice reboot policy that really helps you. So, and they're the only daily fantasy sports platform to offer that reboot policy. So check it out today at pricepicks.com, pricepicks.com slash locked on NBA. We're back on the Lockdown Thunder Podcast, on the Lockdown Podcast at work, your teams every day. Thank you so much for making us your first listen every single morning, every single day. We're here for you talking Thunder basketball. Folks, what a time it is. What a signature win it is for the Thunder uh, you can also check out Locked On Sports Today. It's the 24-7 YouTube channel uh, with all of our streaming shows. It's the only uh, national sports 24-7 streaming channel that brings you the local stories from our local experts here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Well, when you dive into this game individually for the Thunder, we talked big picture. You see SGA. He was assertive and aggressive from... Uh, tip off to the end of the game, really. Uh, he, he shot a lot of shots just right out of the gate, which uh, I, I like. I, there's there's times where he often feels out the game, uh, but this time he was just attacking. And it resulted in, you know, a, a quote-unquote poor free, uh, you know, field goal percentage night from him overall because of just uh, his standards are so high. But 45% still is not, is not terrible. Uh, 45% from the floor, 7 for 8 from the line. Six rebounds, eight assists, two steals, 25 points in this game from SGA. Uh, I thought that SGA uh, played well, drew the attention, and of course, that's how you get that gravity to to dish out eight assists. But Chet Holmgren, Chet Holmgren was a huge difference maker for the Thunder. 17 points, 11 rebounds, one assist, nine blocks. I mean, that's nine blocks is absurd. For Chet Holmgren, one for four from three, fifty percent from the floor. They if they found him a little bit more as a, as a as a roller to the basket. I hope that they continue to find that as the season progresses. That that is just that can be just easy, you know, four six points a night, easy without thinking uh, with, with Chet as a roller at least. Uh, and then of course he's getting he's trying to get that three ball back uh, to where it was to start the season. One for four tonight. Uh, like to see him as a trailer uh, hitting threes again. But the nine blocks, like the way that he just deters shots at the rim and the way that he uh, 
of course, blocks shots, but like just it simply deters them and, and makes you think better of going up at the rim, even at times. All stems from his confidence to get dunked on. Like you mentioned, it, he had dunked on uh, in, in the first quarter by Jamal Murray. It doesn't stop him from going and chasing blocks, but not only chasing blocks, but protecting the rim. Like there's a difference. Like you can chase blocks and, and, and rack up block numbers, but because you're you're so jumpy for blocks, you let up an easy bucket because you're, you're you're anticipating the wrong way or you're you're in the air too soon. They can dump it off behind you and get an easy bucket that way. Chet times it so well and uses his length so well. And I think that one of the most encouraging things was here's a guy who, from the beginning, you've heard about how he's a hoop junkie and he loves, you know, he loves watching basketball, loves watching film, loves working hard, all that good stuff. You could really see that implemented in this game against Jokic, his second chance against Jokic. And what did he do? He didn't let Jokic just back him down and get deep into the paint anymore. He, he started to use his his ability to swim around Jokic and try to get the steal that way. And if you don't get the steal and you're behind Jokic, that's okay because A, he was only just going to back you down anyway and, and not saying that because it's checked, but, but Jokic does that to anybody. So now that you're behind him, you still have the chance to block and, and, and to contest from behind, which is what Chet's able to do. And you can also come away with deflections or just disruptance uh, and make him kind of reset his mark on, on the post. So on the post up. So I thought that Chet did a much better job of defending Jokic in, in this game, just positionally and, and um, not just getting totally uh, handled by Jokic. And I mean, Jokic still had a phenomenal game because he's, he's Jokic. I mean, 24 points, uh, 12 boards, six assists, you know, I mean, I'm sorry, 12 assists, six boards. Uh, you know, it's not a, it's not a otherworldly game from Jokic, which is how good he is, but like, it's still really a good game, obviously. Uh, but, but that's going to happen no matter what. But Chet was really good and he really uh, made the adjustment against Jokic. And then you saw J-Dub. J-Dub had an awful game against Sacramento. You're, you're not going to win any game uh, hardly against any team where J-Dub plays the way he played against Sacramento. And he bounces back in this one to 24 points, 11 for 20 from the floor. That's 55%. Three assists, a board, and a, and a, and a steal in this game. He hit a, a huge clutch bucket over like four nuggets, which sets up the SGA game winner. Like that cannot happen without somehow – J-Dub mustering up that shot with all that added strength over the offseason. Uh, J-Dub hitting that shot was huge for OKC. Uh, I think that that three-headed monster just complements each other so well. And like, what's encouraging about the Thunder, to kind of circle back to, to that first segment, what's encouraging about this team is that SGA didn't have his perfect game. Like, he didn't have his best game ever. Chet didn't have his best game ever. He had nine blocks. I mean, that was that was crazy good. And 17 and 11 was crazy good. Let me, let me rephrase about Chet. But like, J-Dub had 24 points. And, like, you know, he only had one steal. He had a couple, you know, he had three assists and a board. But, like, these guys didn't play outside themselves. These guys didn't have all career nights and all shoot 100% and just, oh, my goodness, how did this happen? Like, this was just a pretty good, eh, pretty, like, normal game from them except for the nine blocks, pretty, pretty like normal game from them in the sense of like, it didn't take some fluky, fluky masterpiece from these guys to beat the nuggets or like, Oh yeah, they beat the nuggets, but they'll never play like that again. They'll never shoot that way again. Right? Like Shea's going to shoot better. Chet is in all likelihood going to shoot better from three more often than not than one for four. You know, and J-Dub is going to do more than just score more often than not. You know, especially more than he did against Denver. So, like, these guys can get better. This was not the ceiling of those three, and that's how you won this game. And so it just, it just allows you to envision how good this can be in the future, how good this can be um, once it's all figured out. But Lou Dor also deserves credit. 50% from the floor, two for three from three, uh, four boards, two assists. 13 points, but some key, key, key defense down the stretch of this game, which which makes this game uh, winnable and, and makes this game a win for OKC. Jay Will was the best player off the bench. Three massive threes 
four rebounds for him, uh, an assist, 11 points. He played with Chet in uh, in dueling big lineups to close the first half. To start the second half, it looked really good. I liked it. I think that when you're looking at, th- at this, it's what we've said all along on this show, where I don't believe that the Thunder need a need a you know traditional big man to start next to next to Chet and the, and to the play the bulk minutes next to, next to Chet, but to to play him next to another big for spurts and to just have the option sitting there uh, as something you can go to out of the bullpen. I, I totally see the value of that, and you saw the value uh, transpire of that with J Will. Uh, Isaiah Joe, four for seven from the floor, despite going one for four from from uh, three. Hit a couple tough mid-range buckets. Uh, was super aggressive. Him flying in uh, for that rebound to set up Shea's game winner, like that is just pure physicality and, and meeting the moment. And to do that on the defensive end with his frame is, is just awesome stuff. And it's why that I've continued to harp on for two years that he is going to be a playoff player who can survive and can play uh, in the postseason. Uh, he had an assist to steal a block, 12 points for for uh, Isaiah Joe. Uh, Casey Wallace, you know, he had quiet offensive night. I thought that they missed him a few times as he was an open, open in the corner. But Casey Wallace defensively, like rising up and contesting over uh, you know, Michael Porter Jr. and the likes of these kind of taller nuggets uh, was another uh, great game from him. Wiggins, two for two in a small dose of 12 minutes. Uh, Wiggins just, you cannot say enough about how good Wiggins is and, and how good he is um, as a as a piece in your rotation because he fits all 30 rotations. I don't care if your team is card heavy, if your team is big heavy, if your team is wing heavy, you can find a spot for Wiggins in any lineup. No, you can, you, you roll out four guys, any four, Wiggins is going to fit in there. Like that's how good Wiggins is. And I, and I think that that's really awesome uh, to see. Uh, we're going to get to your takeaways from this game. Cause this was a very exciting game for this fan base. Very exciting game uh, for you all uh, right after this. But first I want to say right now, our good friends over at FanDuel folks. FanDuel is great. Uh, FanDuel is there for you. And it is uh, the best place to go right now because you have uh, the ability to place your bets on the over under prop bet spreads and more you can also place your bets on everything from the NFL college football basketball NBA NHL all that fun stuff and right now new customers can get hundred and fifty dollars in bonus bets that's a hundred and fifty dollars in bonus bets uh, with winning any five dollar money line bet $150 in bonus bets if you place that $5 money line bet and win. The money line is just who you think will win. Uh, and, and so there you go. You can go and get that done at fanduelcom slash locked on right now. Uh, go to the NBA tab if you want to bet on the NBA. Uh, and you can go see against the uh, Grizzlies, the Thunder. They have a money line out there. If you want to if you want to place your $5 money line bet on the Grizzlies uh, to lose to the Thunder tonight, you can go do that. At FanDuel. So check them out today. That's fanduel.com slash locked on. Fanduel.com slash locked on. We're back on the Lockdown Thunder Podcast, on the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much for making us your first listen every single morning, every single day. We're here for you talking Thunder basketball. Uh, at D Raven says, uh, if the Thunder can consistently rebound, I honestly think uh, and don't see a reason why the Thunder can't uh, get a top seed. Uh, trying to be objective here, but uh, yeah, I mean, the Thunder, even with that, without consistently rebounding our top seed right now. Uh, so if this season continues to trend the way it's just trending right now, they'd be a top seed. But yeah, I mean, if they fix the rebounding, uh, then they'd then they'd really have very seldom holes. So I would have to agree with you on that one. Uh, Colbert says, huge win, absolutely enormous. I agree. Uh, Frazen said, uh, uh, Insane disrespect from Denver not even to try to get the ball out of Shea's hands. Yeah, I mean, I think that that was the beauty of Mark not calling the timeout of, of, you know, Shea said that he looked to Mark and Mark kind of just told him to go. And not calling that timeout there didn't allow Denver to set the set their defense fully, uh, which if you call a timeout there, it's easier to deny Shea um, the ball on, on the inbound. And then you've got to go to your second or third option uh, in that case. So even though Mark's really good at drawing up ATOs, I would have preferred to just let Shea have the ball and see what happens. And 
and that's what happened. You know, you, you rise up over over Shea. Uh, you know, Res Shea rises up and, and, and gets the bucket. So uh, that was awesome. It was an awesome game winner for Shea. Uh, Trey Thomas has best win of the season so far. It absolutely was the best win of the season so far. Uh, Skywalker says this team is getting a lot better. Uh, is is getting a lot better at taking the punches of, of other teams uh, and has developed the counter punch. In years past, the Thunder have been hit uh, with an extended run or cold streak, and it's uh, taken us out of the game completely. Everyone is locked in for 48 minutes. Beautiful basketball. Yeah, th this team's ability to play independent of the scoreboard, uh, it's been a message all season long from Mark and the players, but you can actually see it uh, come true when you're watching this team play. Uh, whenever, whenever you're down 10 in the middle of the fourth quarter in Denver on getaway day where you're about to come home for a really long homestand, to stay locked in, to stay uh, – you know, kind of in the moment and and go win that game. You cannot say enough about how how impressive that is to go win that game in in, in a season where there's 82 games and, and, and like you almost it's almost human nature to say, ah, okay, we can we can throw this one away. Kind of just like at, at your job, like this is a job. Like it's a there's certain days where you just feel like, ah, we can we can mail this day in, right? Uh, well, with the Thunder, that they they have not had any of those uh, mail in days. Uh, at Andrew says. Uh, these are the wins that uh, that the Thunder need to keep a top three seed. Still a grind to go, but a statement win uh, for the year. Yeah, if if you want to win game, you know, if you want to if you want to be a top four seed in the West and, and get home court advantage, you've got to steal games like this. Yeah, on paper they should have lost to to Sacramento and Denver. Like if you were if you were doing this on paper, right, December first, and on December first you were going down this, the, the the schedule win loss win loss win loss. You'd have marked down two losses here to to turn one of those into a win. That's how you you continue to be uh, a surprise team up, up the standings and a team that can uh, and a team that can be a top four seed in the West and, and clinch home court advantage at least for a playoff series, uh, if not longer. So uh, continuing on here, Steri says great team win. Everyone contributed. The rookie of the year and MVP both uh, reside in Oklahoma City. Looking good for that so far. Looking good for that so far. Uh, Dengi says it might be the Thunder signature one of the season so far. It is. Uh, even with the offense not clicking and the threes not falling, the Thunder uh, grinded it out. Uh, benching Giddy is an interesting trend to watch. Uh, it's been a trend the whole season. And I, I told you preseason, like they, they benched Giddy last year whenever he was playing bad. And last year's team didn't have uh, the caliber of players you can put in the game uh, that this year's team does. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, Josh Giddy was playing awful. I, I, I said it in the pregame show uh, on Saturday uh, afternoon that this was not a good matchup for Giddy. Like the, the Nuggets are so long and they and they play such good defense that like if any team is able to to disrupt his offensive flow and and, and plug the lane and turn him over and everything, it'd be Denver. Um, and he didn't play well. He, he didn't impact the game defensively. He didn't rebound the ball. Uh, he, he didn't play good offensively. So like he just, he played a career low. I mean, a season low at least in minutes uh, for Josh Giddy. And, and it is what it is. Uh, he, he's just objectively not a good player right now uh, for the Thunder. Uh, Harold says, once again, Lou Dort uh, is playing some great cl uh, crunch time defense. Uh, the way he and Chet work together uh, in the two-man game is textbook. I agree. I mean, it is a lethal combination to have an anchor like that in Chet Holmgren with what Lou Dort provides defensively. Uh, Jimmy Min says, best road win since game one of the 2016 Western Commerce Finals. Uh, this is a huge road win. Very, very big uh, road win uh, for, uh, for OKC. Uh, continuing on, just a lot of a lot of huge statements, uh, I, I, huge huge statements for uh, the Thunder, uh, and, and we just can see the excitement of of everyone from uh, from OKC for this win. So that's a lot of fun for all of you to get to enjoy this. Hopefully, um, hopefully the Thunder get another big win against Memphis, and by big it would it would just be, simply be uh, taking care of business against Memphis against uh, the Grizzlies tonight. In the Paycom Center. Uh, appreciate you all listening. We'll be back to recap that game afterward. And until then, be good and be good to one another.